Hey guys, Noob here. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to crack a WPA slash WPA2 Wi-Fi password using Naive Hashcat on Kali Linux. A little disclaimer here before we begin. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. Hacking into a Wi-Fi network is illegal and is considered as a federal crime. The only time that you can legally hack into a Wi-Fi network would be if the network either belongs to you or belongs to someone who has given you explicit permission to do so. This tutorial is divided into two parts. The first part is mainly on the process of capturing the four-way handshake between a Wi-Fi network and a device connecting to it and saving it into a capture file. In the second part, we'll be converting that capture file into a format that Naive Hashcat can understand and using that converted capture file we will try to crack it using a program called Naive Hashcat against a word list that contains a long list of common and internet leak passwords using an attack called a dictionary attack. For this tutorial you're going to need a laptop or a desktop to run a live CD of Cal Linux into a USB thumb drive and a compatible wireless network adapter capable of monitor mode such as this alpha Wi-Fi card that I have. To check if your Wi-Fi card supports monitor mode, you can check out my video on putting your Raspberry Pi on monitor mode on the upper right hand corner of your screen. It says Raspberry Pi but the video tutorial will also work on other Wi-Fi cards that supports monitor mode. If you have a Raspberry Pi, you can also use it to follow along the first part of the tutorial to obtain the capture file and just later on copy it into a laptop or a desktop computer that has a GPU where you can try and crack the password. Now, if you already have everything you need, we can begin. We're going to use Kali Linux operating system for the attacker machine as it specializes in cybersecurity. Kali Linux is an open source Linux distribution that has a plethora of tools that come pre installed, basically making it a Swiss knife for ethical hackers. So go ahead and go to kali.org slash downloads and download the live version of Kali. If possible, please download using torrents to help lessen the workload of their main servers. If you are finished with the download, you can now flash the ISO image into your USB thumb drive. On Windows, you can use applications like Rufus, Balena Etcher, or Unit Bootin if you're on Linux to flash the ISO image to your USB thumb drive. After you have flashed Kali on your USB thumb drive, you can now open up your laptop or desktop and boot into Kali Linux. To be able to do that, you can go to your BIOS setup and select to boot on your USB on the boot options. When Kali starts, don't install it. Instead, run the live AMD64 on the boot menu. When you're already logged in, you can now plug in your wireless network adapter and put it in monitor mode. If you don't know how to put your Wi-Fi card on monitor mode, again, you can check out my video on the upper right hand corner of your screen and then just, and then just come back again here later. When you have already enabled monitor mode, we can now begin scanning for Wi-Fi access points. So on your terminal, type aerodom-ng followed by the monitoring interface name. If you followed my video tutorial on enabling monitor mode, then the monitoring interface name is MON0. Otherwise, replace MON0 with whatever your monitor interface name was. After you hit the return key, you will see all the available Wi-Fi access points on the rightmost side under ESSID column. Find the router that you want to hack and make sure under the column ENC that the router is using WPA or the WPA2 security. Otherwise, we won't be able to hack the network. 
We also want to take note of the MAC address and the channel number of the router. The MAC address is under the column BSS ID and the channel number is under the column CH to the left of the network's name. Now press Ctrl C to quit aerodump-ng and type aerodump-ng-bssid followed by the MAC address and then dash C followed by the channel number and then W followed by the path of the directory where you want to save the capture files. I'm going to save it at slash home slash Kali slash desktop. And then lastly, type the interface. In our case, it's mon0. Then hit the return key. Now wait for someone to connect to the network and a handshake will appear. It's indicated by a line with a tag that says handshake WPA followed by a MAC address in the upper right corner of the screen. If you're a little bit impatient, you can kick someone off the network briefly, forcing a handshake when they reconnect automatically using a de-authentication attack. Now that's for another video, but if it's already available, then you can see it, see it in the upper right hand corner of your screen. For the sake of brevity, I'm just going to disconnect and reconnect my phone from the network so that we can get our handshake. Now that we have our handshake, change into the directory where you saved the capture files into and rename the dash 01.cap into wifi.cap with mv dot slash dash 01.cap wifi.cap. This concludes the first part. For the second part, we need to convert the CAP file into a HCCAPX format that Naive Hashcat can understand. There are two ways to do this. The easiest way to do this is to use this web interface provided by the Hashcat team. If you don't mind uploading sensitive data to a website that you have no control of, then go to https colon slash slash hashcat.net slash cap2 hccapx slash and just upload your .cap file and it will be converted to a .hccapx file. Otherwise, you can download the cap2 hccapx utility and execute it locally using the latest release of hashcat utils binaries for Linux, Windows, and OS X. Just download Hashcat Utils 7-zip archive from here. Uh, the link provided down below the description and unzip it with P7-zip. We're almost at the end of this tutorial. If you like this video, then please hit that like button and share if you haven't yet. If you don't want to miss out on my videos, then please also subscribe to my channel. Okay, so moving on. The next step that we need to do is to get Naive Hashcat. This is the program you'll use to crack the password. In the terminal, enter the following commands. git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash Brandon Dorsey slash Naive dash Hashcat. Then change it to that directory with cd Naive Hashcat and type curl dash capital L dash O dict slash rock you dot txt https colon slash slash github dot com slash Brandon Dorsey slash naive dash hashcat slash releases slash download slash data slash rock you dot txt if your computer doesn't have a GPU aka a dedicated graphics card then you'll need to use aircrack-ng instead. Otherwise, type in all caps hash underscore file equals the path to wifi.hccapx file then in all caps again pot underscore file equals cracked.pot this is where the cracked password will be stored then all caps again hash underscore type equals 2500 this is the mode for the hashcat capture file and then finally dot slash naive 
hashcat.sh. Now wait for the Wi-Fi password to be cracked. Once the password is cracked, it will be stored in the crack.pot file. It can take anywhere from a few hours to a few months for the password to be cracked. Once the password is cracked, its string will be placed inside the crack.pot file found in the naive hashcat directory. The word or phrase after the last colon in the string is the password. Just like I said before, if your computer doesn't have a GPU, then you'll need to use aircrack-ng instead. Now, cd into slash home slash Kali desktop and download the dictionary file again with the command curl dash capital L dash O rocky dot txt https colon slash slash github dot com slash brown and dorsey slash naive dash hashcat slash releases slash download slash data slash rocky dot txt Another disclaimer, keep in mind though that aircrack-ng will not be able to crack the WPA or WPA2 password if the password isn't in the word list. Alright, so in your terminal, type the following commands. Aircrack-ng-a if you're cracking a WPA network. Otherwise, dash A2 if it's a WPA2 network. Dash B, then the MAC address you found in the last section. Dash W, then the path to rockyou.txt, and then wifi.cap. Again, wait for the terminal to display the results. When the password is cracked, you'll see a key found heading appear. You see the password displayed to the right of the key found heading in brackets. In my machine, using aircrack-ng to crack the password took just a few seconds in comparison with using naive hashcat, which I find a bit odd. Okay, so what we learned here is having a terrible Wi-Fi password give hackers the opportunity to easily gain access to your network. Anyways, that's all we have for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, please hit that like, share, and subscribe buttons. And as always, stay safe and see you next time.